The Attack Chopper is one of the best vehicles in Battlefield 2042, and in this video we'll cover everything that you need to get started doing some decent air support for everyone down there on the battlefield. This chopper went from being a flying brick with no real firepower to literally the best vehicle in this game. So in this video we're gonna cover all weapons, why and why not to use them, talk about how and when to engage, and when to seek cover, do a rundown of your main threats to keep you alive longer, and I'll also show you how to do quick repairs up in the air. And hopefully by then you should be good to go to give your team some decent air support. Okay, and with the intro out of the way, I really just wanted to thank you all for the massive support. Not only here on YouTube, but also you guys on Discord. We are growing into the best community I've ever been in. But now, let's talk attack choppers. The best loadout for the attack chopper grants you with the ability to one-pass anti-air vehicles. <laughs> Which is nuts, because they're supposed to take you out. Oh, but anyway, how do we get started? If you just started out, you got smart rockets. They don't really do damage, but they hone in on vehicles. Makes them really beginner-friendly and should give you your first unlocks pretty quickly. Damage output just sucks on them. You only got 8 rockets and they're slow as hell. Even very light armored vehicles like choppers are not really bothered by them. You can do infantry with them to some extent, but once you get the next kind of rockets, you should never Don't touch them touch again. Then your first secondary, probably heat seekers. You can bait out the flares on an enemy chopper or jet, you should be able to do 70 damage with them. I mean they do their job, but if you stuck to heat seekers and unlocked everything, this is probably you. He crashed. <laughs> Okay, let's say you unlock the anti-vehicle pods. These rockets have the biggest damage output of all the main weapons. It'll take you some time to get used to them, but you can two-shot little birds and jets, three-hit stealth choppers, and kill those heat seeker rats with four little missiles. By the time you get comfortable with them, you probably also unlock the air ground missiles. Each rocket does 35 damage against all armored vehicles, takes forever to lock onto, makes you already a way more skilled pilot than the heat seekers. If you combine them, the anti-vehicle rockets, you're already a real nightmare for armored vehicles. And that already should bring you to the next unlock, the anti-infantry rockets. They shoot way faster, have six more rockets, have less damage output and reload for fucking ever. <laughs> now you're probably like in your head, fish they're infantry rockets, they should be better against infantry. Yeah, nope. You need two to four rockets and you're constantly out of ammo. They do less damage than the vehicle rockets against all targets and are just not as good as the holy grail of primary weapons. Still, there's one more primary. Now if you're like, Oh, the Russian chopper got 30mm cannons, they're way better at infantry. Fish you, that's your gunner's job. Yes, the 30s are decent against infantry, but infantry is your gunner's job. They suck against all kinds of vehicles and just put you at a disadvantage. Because by now you should have unlocked the wire-guided missiles. Wire-guided or TAU missiles do... 30 damage right away. And the best thing about them, they follow your aim. You just shoot it when you see armor, switch to your anti-vehicle rockets right away and see all their armor just melt. <laughs> the best part about them is in how many ways you can use them. Don't have to lock on for ages to kill one kind of vehicle. They work as good in the air as they do on the ground. So the best loadout you can do is have vehicle rockets with wire guided missiles. But the thing that makes this chopper actually great is its gunner. Not only did the gunner seat get a huge buff in terms of rate of fire, but it now has also thermals to see and farm infantry even easier. And while you as a pilot should focus vehicles, the gunner can literally decimate infantry. That's if you need good. some good gunners or pilots, join us on Discord, we got you. Now the hardest part as a gunner is not to overheat your gun. Meaning tap fire at all times, just pick away on infantry step by step. If you do that, you do not overheat and are ready at all times to help your pilot out should you need your help on hard-hitting vehicles. Okay, now you know why it's the best vehicle in the game. But now let's talk about engaging and defense. Okay, the attacking mindset. Countermeasures are up, your health is over 75%, meaning you can flare everything that locks onto you, and with the 75 health you will not get one hit from the biggest fear of all helicopter pilots. A ginger. In attack mode, try to get as many kills as possible and also being aware of your safe space. Meaning you're not being locked on, like we are on this side of the wall, you can take out as much as you can until they start locking onto you. With your safe space in mind, try pushing as hard and as far as you can. Use the Tau plus rocket pods to deal with your biggest threats right away and give your gunner some decent and steady angles. After attacking for a while, you either have to flare or your health goes below 75, so your mindset will switch into the attack mode light. Attack mode light is way more risky. Now you have to trust your gunner or pilot to deal with the threat right away. If you get hit now, you should still survive, but getting hit now will switch you into defense. And that's what you're trying to avoid for your gunner. I think this rocket somehow missed us even though we had no flares. I know it's too many for us to take, so we switch to active defense. That means flares still popping, high and steady flight to let our gunner get some kills, all while going to the last safe space. 
but as soon as the flares are out, we go low and find our latest safe space in order to get our flares and health back. So passive defense keeps you alive, make sure you get your flares and health back and lets you switch into attacking mode again. With a little bit of practice, you can keep passive defense as short as possible. Here I knew the only lock-ons are coming from their base, so until we're there we were in attack mode already. Ok, now we've given you the idea of when to engage and when to defend, let's rank your main threats on the battlefield, in order to keep the attacking phase as long as possible. Ok, as an aspiring pilot, you should probably know how fish you are if an enemy chopper sneaks up on you. So that has to be your target priority number one. Your next biggest threat are probably AA. AAs are only a threat if you do not see them. If you see them first, use the Tau and Rocket combo. You now have eliminated your two biggest threats, meaning you now have two minutes to let your gunner farm infantry deal with all the armor for your team. In maps with two choppers, it's a lot harder to take track when air vehicles are down. So just go with the flow. We were going for this tank, but spotted one of our main threats up. We're still in attack mode, we charge him right away because of main threat. Even though now we are in attack mode light, AAs are down, and where he's going, there's still plenty of cover, so we could call it active defense. An active defense should go to a safe space. And that's exactly what we do while taking out a main threat. Occasionally, some jets can switch to main priority as well. Say they hit you more than 25 on one pass, which puts you in defense, oh, yes. they are a threat to you. You should immediately be eliminated. Ok, let's do a recap. You spawn your chopper, find the enemy chopper first and ideally gain some height on him. Because if you can't hit your shot, height controls the fight. This is your main priority target and you should do whatever it takes to take him down. Blow him up, hit him into a building and good shit, main priority down. That's where your gunner can get all the kills in the meantime until you find the AA or it starts shooting you. Trust me, with the new thermals and the increased fire rate, you're gonna should be able to rack up loads of kills pretty easily. Ok, now let's say you found your main threat number 2. As long as you're in attack mode, you should be able to one pass any enemy wildcat. Most of AA players are not the smartest. The second they see you, instead of shooting you with their main guns, they switch to lock-ons, which essentially lets you kill them without even being hit. And trust me with that, the secondary gunner on this tank did way more damage than the AA. <laughs> But it's not all just shits and giggles in the attack chopper. Usually around the 30 kill mark, it will bring out all the missiles they have. Missiles, TV rockets or however you wanna call them are the main reason we have to have 75 health in order to be in attack mode. These things can come from anywhere, will not stop the whole round and do 75 to 85 damage to you, depending on where they hit. And trust me, you are gonna feel when you pissed off too many of them. Usually to dodge them, losing height, doing quicker turns than them should get you out alive. Should. Missiles are getting nerfed, so maybe it's only me who hates them. <laughs> okay, but because we're now at over 7 minutes already and I can't say everything in a video that's not over an hour long, I'm gonna show you how to do the quick repair. If you still want to know something, drop it in the comments down below and we might do a part 2. In order to do the quick repair, forwards as you usually do, while lifting up your nose. When you start to lift up your nose, all your gunner needs to do is hop out of the vehicle and spawn right on your little wing. This works consistently, just needs a little practice. I hope you got at least something out of this video. You're an absolute legend and thanks for watching.